Good morning, everybody. We'll get started in just a minute or two here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hope you all are having a nice morning so far. We'll be talking about snakes of our area of Florida today, the Southwest section of Florida. With a, just a brief mention of the ones that are in uh, more Northern areas, but they're ones that we don't have to worry about. So <laughs> we won't focus on them. I'm Susan Griffith, and I'm the Florida Friendly Landscaping Program Coordinator here at UF IFAS Manatee County Extension Service, and also a lifelong snake lover. <laughs> um, I learned very early on that snakes really don't make the greatest pets, but I really do appreciate them in the wild. And I really, really get upset when people send me pictures of dead snakes to identify. So I'm hoping that through some education, we can kind of spread the word to people that your first reaction upon seeing any snake um, should not be to immediately try to kill it. So if there's anything that I can achieve with this webinar today, I hope that that in the least is, is what I achieve with this today. <laughs> All right, um, I believe it is 1030, so we'll go ahead and get started. And whoops, my presentation is not moving, so I'm going to stop my share and bring this up again. Hope that it will move this time. Okay, there we go. Okay, so snakes are known to be ancient symbols of healing and transformation. Um, in some cultures, they symbolize fertility and even eternity. Um, if you've ever visited a doctor, <laughs> which all of us probably have, you'll know that they all wear a symbol similar to um, the one here in the middle um, with two snakes kind of intertwined. Um, so it, it is something that you'll you'll see throughout history and cultures um, throughout the world um, with varied significance. The Hopi Indians believed that snakes were responsible for the success of their crops. Um, so they would celebrate their mystical powers as they saw them with an annual snake dance. And of course in India, we know um, that charming cobras is a tourist attraction. Um, and then there's this enormous snake Buddha statue uh, located in Thailand. And so um, there are lots of different ancient beliefs about snakes. Some ancient cultures worship snakes and believe them to be the umbilical cords that tethered humanity to mother earth. And on the flip side, a lot of people really fear snakes. Um, this was my mom around 1980, just before letting me buy my first snake. She thought they were disgusting and said something to the effect of, ew, there's just something about them, the way they slither around. They're just so creepy and gross and slimy. <laughs> I will never forget that. Um, she really was creeped out by snakes. Um, she really did think that they were slimy. And she was really surprised when she finally touched the snake that she ended up buying me, that they're not slimy at all. They're actually very smooth and cool feeling to the touch. So um, I'd like to, to try to change some minds today. Um, instead of fearing snakes, you really should be fearing rats instead. Um, rats, as well as mice, um, are some of the favorite snacks of snakes. So if we're out there wiping out all of the snake populations, we're allowing the rat and mouse populations to explode. So 
um, these are some of the the various and sundry, <laughs> not really, um, horrible diseases that uh, rats can transmit to humans. Um, salmonella, salmonellosis, um, which is the disease that's caused by salmonella bacteria, um, hemorrhagic fever, Lassa fever, leptospirosis, um, trichinosis, the plague, bubonic plague um, can be spread by rats, um, rat bite fever, um, the arena viruses, tularemia, um, it just it goes on and on. Lots, lots of different diseases can be spread by rats. So, um, so let's not kill snakes. Um, let's let the snakes stay in our environment so that they can start wiping out the rats. And unlike snakes, wild rats want to live in our, in our, among us, in our, in our homes, because they do kind of depend on us for their survival. They eat our food, they eat our garbage, um, they can squeeze into a half inch crack, and they can chew on the wires in your attic, causing fires and electrical issues. Um, rats, if they're in a home, commonly bite children in their sleep because kids notoriously go to bed with food crumbs on their clothing. Um, rats contaminate 10 times the amount of food that they eat with their urine droppings and hair, also really disgusting. You can catch diseases from rats just from the fleas that are on the rats that then jump off of the rats onto you. Um, so I hope I've convinced you that you've been fearing the wrong animal. Snakes are not the ones to fear because snakes eat rats. They eat lots and lots of rats. So the non-venomous, um, actually all, all snakes eat rats, but particularly non-venomous native snakes are very beneficial and they should be respected and left alone to do their job. Here are some unique legless lizards. Believe it or not, these are not snakes, even though there is not a single sign of, of legs on them. They are actually lizards. Um, and we actually have four species of legless glass lizards that live in Florida. A couple of them are pictured here on the left. And then we have this really very unattractive Florida worm lizard. Um, that looks just like a worm, but is actually a lizard, believe it or not. DNA <laughs> testing can tell us a lot of things. Um, here's another snake-like creature. Um, this one has barely visible vestigial limbs called an amphiuma, and also the Florida sand skink, which if you look really, really closely, you can see his tiny little vestigial legs here. Um, but if not for that, you would be certain that that was a, a snake, but it's not. And we do have about 46 different species of native snakes who live in Florida. Luckily, only six of these are venomous snakes, uh, whereas Australia actually has 33 venomous snakes. Can you imagine? Um, so out of these six, luckily, only four of them live anywhere near us. So in the southwest section of Florida here, we only have four venomous snakes to ever be concerned about. The other two are way up in the North Florida area and the Panhandle. We do have four non-native snakes that are now established in Florida. Um, the main one being the Burmese python. Um, they are moving north, however, so even in like in Collier County now, they're having a lot of issues and even Lee County, um, they're having some issues now finding these, um, these giant pythons. So um, it's estimated that they'll, they'll probably end up coming, migrating further up toward us eventually. Um, tens of thousands of them are currently breeding in the Everglades. Um, despite all the, the hunting that's now being done to try to eradicate them or at least control them, they can get up to 23 feet long and weigh close to 150 pounds. And they eat anything from deer to raccoons to even alligators. Um, they are responsible for a 90% decline in the mammalian species of the Everglades at this point. Um, when this one here pictured ate a deer um, and commonly they're found and 
once they they kill them they cut them open and it's pretty typical to find somewhere around 95 eggs inside them so imagine you know the rate of, of breeding that goes on is kind of incalculable here's uh shown stretched out across a, a road. Uh, you can get the idea of how large these things really are. Um, if you do happen to see an exotic species that you know should not be where it is, um, please call 1-800-I've-GOT-ONE. And there's also a really handy mobile app that you can install on your phone, um, also called I've Got One, which uses your GPS coordinates. So um, it's very, very handy for wildlife um, tracking personnel to to locate the area where you have found this exotic species that does not belong there. So um, you might hear some people often refer to snakes as poisonous. Um, they're actually considered venomous rather than poisonous because poison you ingest. Venom gets injected into you by a venomous animal. So the difference there is in the delivery method. Animals are always going to be referred to as venomous or non-venomous, and plants can be considered poisonous because you'll be ingesting the plant. The plant will not be attacking you and <laughs> injecting itself into you. Okay, this is an interesting little factoid. Did you know that snakes never blink? They do not actually have eyelids. They have protective clear coverings over their eyes called brills which are modified scales and those are shed along with their skin. So when snakes want to go to sleep, they can actually close their retinas, but not their eyeballs. So sleeping snakes always look like they're awake. If you see a snake that has clouded eyebrows, that means it is time to shed their skin. Um, snakes grow and they have to shed their skin periodically because while their bodies grow, their skin does not. So um, the shedding can happen four to 12 times per year, depending on the species of snake. Snake scales are made of keratin, just like human hair. Um, each scale is as sensitive as a human fingertip. Um, shedding can help to remove harmful parasites, and it may take a couple of days for the snake to complete its shedding process, up to possibly two weeks. Um, and skin shedding in snakes has a name, it's called ectasis. The snakes have relatively poor eyesight anyway, so this is really exacerbated when their brills are clouded and they can even go blind if their brills are not shed successfully. And if you've ever noticed, um, you won't be able to see an external ear on a snake. They don't have them. Um, they don't have eardrums either. Uh, they have um, fully formed inner ear structures and it's connected directly to their jawbone. So they feel the vibrations, like if you're walking near them, they'll feel that. And this relays a signal to their brain um, into that inner ear structure, which registers as hearing. And it is a misconception that snakes can completely unhinge their jaws. Um, they do have to swallow all of their food whole. So um, what they have is an elasticated ligament that attaches their, their top and bottom jaw. And this um, elastic um, quality allows them to expand their jaw um, enormously uh, to allow them to eat prey that is far larger than their heads. In this case, there's a constructor um, attempting to eat a crocodile. This may not be a wise thing to do. Sometimes their eyes are bigger than their stomachs, as they say, and sometimes it will try to eat something that's far too large or far too, too vicious, and it will actually fight its way out of the snake and kill the snake. And this I want to, to really focus on. This is something that is um, a kind of like one of those urban legend things that anytime that a snake um, attempts to strike or looks like it's coiling up and hisses at you and 
strikes at you and and tries to bite you or does actually bite you um, people believe that that alone means that that snake is venomous that is not true um, harmless snakes have all of this behavior so um, they're just trying to protect themselves they're trying to look you know more menacing than they actually are just to keep you away from them so um, there are harmless water snakes that you might have in the pond behind your home if you ever happen to go in there to take out like an invasive plant or something um, these harmless water snakes will bite you multiple times if you happen to get too close to them um, now, we'll talk later about differentiating between harmless water snakes and the, the venomous uh, cotton mouth moccasins, which you definitely don't want to get too close to and don't want to have a bite you. Um, but the harmless ones, there are many, many different species, um, and they're really populous in local ponds of these harmless water snakes that are nothing but beneficial environmentally. Um, but they will bite you and they will draw blood on you, but they will not harm you other than that. Um, even picking up a harmless black racer snake, which most of us are, are very familiar with and know that they are not venomous, they will probably strike you and bite you if you try to pick it up. Um, it's just trying to protect itself. So they can definitely draw blood. Um, if they do, just wash the area well, but really just don't pick them up. Try not to get close to any sort of snake. Um, they're, they really just should be respected. If you see one, any kind of snake, really just back away. Snakes really just only want to be left alone. Um, just respect them, give them their distance, no matter what type of snake it is, and just get out of its way. So we're going to start talking about some of the non-venomous snakes that you'll commonly see in our area of Southwest Florida. And one of them that a lot of people mistake for a really dark black worm is the Brahmini blind snake. It is actually blind. It cannot see. It is a true snake, believe it or not. It's non-venomous. It is non-native to Florida. So it is an exotic species that has naturalized here. All of them are female, which is very interesting. They can reproduce without a male. And this is called parthenogenesis. Very interesting. They are the most widespread snake in all the world. Um, sometimes they're called flower pot snakes because you'll often see them if you lift up a flower pot. Um, if you've ever seen one before, you know now, hey, that was a little tiny snake. They eat ants and termites. Um, they are not segmented like earthworms. And if you do pick one up, they will stick out their tongues just like any other snake. The southern black racer is one of the most common snakes that you'll see. Um, another very beneficial non-venomous snake. They will dart away from you if they see you as quickly as they can possibly propel themselves. They really just don't want to have anything to do with you. Um, which is fine. That's the way it should be. <laughs> um, you'll know them by their um, slender black color, and they all have white under their chin, like you can see very well in this picture. And uh, please pay attention to what they look like as juveniles. They look completely different as juveniles. Um, a lot of people see that snake as a juvenile and they panic and they think oh my gosh what is this this must be a copperhead no for one thing we don't even have copperheads in our area that's one of those snakes that i talked about that only lives up in northern florida you'll never see a copperhead here so just get that whole copperhead thing out of your minds um they are diurnal, which means they're active during the day, which is one reason why this species of snake is so frequently seen. They're also one of the most populous snakes. They're pretty successful breeders. Um, they do lay eggs, and three, to tr three up to 24, um, and they're large white ovals, which you can see up in the top right of the screen. Oops, I hope my, my screen's not in the way. I'll Try to move that out of your way, um, but they're they're very distinctive looking eggs. Uh, 
Another very common snake in our area and another one that gets hacked sometimes by people who think it's the copperhead as well, or that believe erroneously that corn snakes or red rat snakes, um, the name is interchangeable. Um, they believe that they are venomous and they are definitely not. Um, they get that name because they're so good at eating rats. So this is one of those really beneficial snakes that we want to keep around in large quantities. Um, this is one of the climbers. They have keel, what they call keeled scales on their bellies, which are rough scales that allow them to climb up walls and things like that. So they can climb trees, they can climb walls. Um, you'll, you'll see them all over the place. Um, they do lay eggs, 12 to 16 usually per, per clutch of egg. And these guys are usually more active in the evening and at night is when you'll most commonly see them. You can see they have really variable appearance. Um, the one over here on the right I want to call attention to, this is the juvenile. Really very distinctive patterning, patterning here. Um, and it's, it's so distinctive that people think it's, it's perhaps an exotic species of snake and therefore does not belong here. So I want you to be aware of, of how it looks as a juvenile. Um, and unfortunately, this juvenile was killed just because someone thought it was something else. Um, and the other thing that fools people is that um, the juvenile uh, pattern on, on the snake um, stays with it as the, the snake becomes quite large. So even though it's still in the juvenile pattern, it can be pretty good size. So that throws people off and they think, oh my gosh, what is this thing? And unfortunately, this one got murdered because of that. Here are pictures of the Eastern yellow rat snake, which is also very common in our area. Um, and it's called, of course, the yellow rat snake because it is yellowish in color and it also loves to eat rats. Um, it has these long stripes that run horizontally um, down the whole length of its body. So that is definitely the the um, the clue to figure out what kind of snake this particular one is as an adult. However, juveniles do have a completely different looking form. So please notice that what they look like when they're juveniles. So you, you start to learn to recognize these guys. And here's yet another non-venomous rat snake, the gray rat snake. And this one also has um, a, a good bit of variability in, in its appearance. Um, the juvenile um, also has a, a really distinctive blotchy um, pattern on, on his skin. So um, be aware of that. As they get older, it becomes more muted um, and um, not quite as, as noticeable. These guys, um, are fairly numerous, but they blend in so well, especially as adults, that you just really don't see them very well. Here's a, a beautiful little snake, the rough green snake. Um, it gets that name rough green snake because it also has the keeled scales on its belly, which allow it to be able to climb trees really easily. Um, and probably also because of it, its green coloration, these guys are, are known to be very arboreal, which means they, they hang out in treetops a lot. Um, these are less common than some of the other snakes. Um, for one reason, probably because of their active green color, they've probably been um, poached in the wild um, for the pet trade. Um, and also you can see that they lay a very small amount of eggs, which does not, of course, help them um, with breeding capacity. Um, the juveniles look similar, but not uh, quite as brightly colored as the adult. But they're, they're really quite beautiful. And this shows you a, a really good look at the, the eye of a non-venomous snake, which is quite different from the more cat-like eyes of the venomous snake. We'll talk about that more in depth later.
Here's the ribbon snake, another non-venomous, um, very small uh, snake, beneficial. It's a very thin snake. That's what, why it gets that name, ribbon snake. Um, you'll know it just because of its slender um, whip-like look to it. Um, this is actually what ended up being my first snake that my mom finally consented to let me have as a pet. Um, and my funny story here is this is one of the species of snakes that can produce live young. They do not lay eggs. So the snake that my mom ended up buying me, my mom who did not want to have a snake in the house at all, she ended up buying me a heavily pregnant snake. We had no idea. So the very next day, literally the very next day, that one snake that she bought me um, under protest had filled our aquarium tank completely up with snakes. So it went from one snake to about 26 snakes the very next morning. So you can imagine the horror of my mother when she saw this. Um, this is not my actual aquarium tank. This is more snakes than 26, but um, this is kind of what it looked like to my mom probably. Um, so the good thing about if you have to buy your child who really wants a snake, a snake, really consider um, going for a native snake, which is what my mom did. And because it was a native snake, we were able to just let them go into the environment without becoming an environmental hazard. So if you have a, a, a child who is absolutely craving a snake um, as a pet, go for the native ones. All right, um, very closely related. They're actually in the same genus as the, the ribbon snake, um, Femnophis. The garter snakes are very similar looking, but they have a lot more pattern to them. So you can pretty easily differentiate them from the ribbon snakes. Um, in Florida, we have the juvenile uh, or the Eastern garter snake rather. And this is the juvenile, very similar looking. And then we have the, the blue stripe garter snake, which is endemic to Florida, meaning that this is only found in Florida. And because of its great beauty, because of that blue color, unfortunately, this snake is poached in the wild quite a bit um, and, and sold on the black market. Here are a couple of very small non-venomous snakes. Probably all of us have at one point in our lives run across a ringneck snake. These are very, very common. Um, you, you might occasionally find these like in your pool cage or something like that. Very, very common, um, completely harmless, very, very sweet little guys. They don't make good pets though. They, they don't live in captivity well. So, so don't try to keep this one as a, as a pet. Um, really the, the best snake, I, I, if you have to have a native snake for a child, probably the best snake to keep as a pet would be the corn snake. Um, they, they really have the best temperament for it. Um, other snakes really will, will just languish and eventually perish in, in captivity, unfortunately. So you don't want that. Um, and then we have the pine wood snake, which is often ca called the pine woods litter, litter snake because it likes to stay in leaf litter. It likes to live in that, that cool, um, moist um, habitat under trees in the leaf litter. And this is the Eastern coach whip. Um, this one is often um, mistaken for two different snakes. As you can see, the front part of the snake looks so completely different from the back of the snake. It really literally does look like a black snake and a tan snake are hanging out together, but it's one snake. Um, this one um, is becoming much more rare. I remember seeing these in the wild a lot as a child, and I have not seen one of these in years. Um, they're, they're quick, um, these days really rarely spotted. And please take note of what the juvenile form looks like, um, in this case also completely different from the adult form. Uh, the Eastern mud snake. 
Now, this guy lays huge clutches of eggs. It can be up to about 100. They're also called the red-bellied mud snake. Um, these are found in more um, eastern areas of, of our southwest Florida counties, um, often near ponds and creeks and, and that sort of thing. Their favorite food to eat is that yucky amphuma <laughs> that I showed you earlier, um, pictured here. Um, so um, the juvenile looks kind of similar to the adult. Um, this is the snake that um, the hoop snake myth was probably started with. If you've ever heard of the hoop snake, um, supposedly legend has it that the snake would take its tail in its mouth and roll down a hill like a hoop and and thrust its tail at you um, to, to try to hurt you. Well, it's non-venomous and it certainly does not have venom in its tail. So it's all just a silly, silly myth. Um, but if you've ever heard of the hoop snake, this is, this is where that myth came from. <laughs> all right, the Florida pine snake. Um, this is another one that lays very small clutches of eggs, only four to eight eggs at a time. And unfortunately, this is a species of special concern due to habitat loss um, caused by expanding human development in the state. Um, it's losing all of its habitat because where do we build most of our homes? We mostly build them in our, our pine forests, our, our what used to be pine forests and then that have been cleared for, um, for subdivision. So um, this was their habitat and they're losing lots and lots of it. Um, they use the dens of native pocket gophers and gopher tortoises um, located in, in areas like pine uplands, scrub sand hills, and turkey oak woodlands. All prime real estate areas, unfortunately. All right, the Eastern hognose snake. This is another one that is often mistaken for a venomous snake and it is not venomous. It's perfectly harmless, um, but it's mistaken because it does have um, kind of an odd shaped head and it makes people wonder, oh my gosh, what is this? They also, as part of, of their um, defense mechanisms, they, they flatten out their necks even more than normal. Um, as you can see sort of in that picture on the left there of the, the more black one, um, they're trying to just make themselves look like they have a, a big venomous head when really they don't. <laughs> so they're not doing themselves any favors as far as humans are concerned um, because humans see that and they panic. Um, they do have a, a real um, distinctive snub nose. So um, that's one key to identifying this species of snake. Um, they are um, extremely variable. Um, they can be really, really patterned like the one on the right which is an adult um, or the, um, the one on the left and even the belly color is extremely variable. It can be anywhere from pink to green. Um, so the hog nose is, is one of those that, that gets cut in half a lot, a lot of the time, unfortunately, just out of um, uh, misidentification. Here is the Florida king snake. Um, this guy is known for its ability to eat venomous snakes. It is immune to pit viper venom. So um, this is a really good guy to have around. <coughs> Excuse me. They can get quite large. <coughs> Excuse me. Up to 80 inches long. Um, it is an egg laying constrictor. Um, it lives in South and in Central Florida. And populations are thought to be diminishing because, again, it's in that kind of historically perfect um, real estate development areas um, of Florida. So um, he's losing habitat at a great rate. Um, this guy can lay anywhere, 
she <laughs> can lay anywhere from three to 30 eggs and the scale color does lighten with age. The juvenile on the left is quite dark and you can see as they mature, they get much lighter. And these are diurnal and that means they're active during the day. Here is another one that is so often misidentified, both of these actually. Um, the scarlet snake on the left and the scarlet king snake on the right. Um, of course, people see them from a distance and they think, oh no, it's a coral snake, panic and kill it. Um, I, I hope that you'll learn today how to identify, how to differentiate between the coral snakes and the scarlet snake and the car and scarlet king snake um, so that this uh, can no longer happen. Um, if you notice here, see the bands. We have red and black together. We have red and black together. Um, so the old um, rhyme to remember, um, just keep this in your mind with snakes, red touch yellow, kill a fellow. So if these bands were red touching yellow, then this would be a Venice coral snake. Um, but this is red touch black, friend of Jack. Red touch yellow, kill a fellow. Red touch black, friend of Jack. <laughs> Try to remember that. Um, so these can't be coral snakes because it's red touch black, friend of Jack. Okay, now also notice both of these non-venomous snakes, the scarlet snake and the scarlet king snake, both have red noses. Whereas the venomous black nose here, that's the, that's the venomous coral snake. They have the black nose. And also look, red touch yellow, kill a fellow. See the red band touching the yellow band. Black nose, venomous. Over here, red touch black, friend of Jack, red nose, red touch black, red nose. Okay. All right. Now here is another one that is murdered way too frequently. Um, this one also eats venomous snakes. So this is another really good snake to have around. It's the non-venomous Eastern indigo snake. It is very rare, it's federally endangered. Um, and that's because it's so large, it's so often mistaken for the, the very large bodied um, cottonmouth moccasin. So people see it and they react, um, unfortunately, and kill it um, without, really paying attention to the clues here. Um, it's very, very shiny. Um, in many cases, it can have some bronze coloration. If you look at it, it has that, that really round eye pupil that tells you that it's non-venomous in this case. Um, they are up to eight and a half feet long. So they can be absolutely enormous um, when they're full grown and they do have these really, really thick bodies. So most non-venomous snakes do not have such a thick body. And that's one reason why people kill them. Um, so the Eastern Indigo, it's a gorgeous snake, um, really a, a beautiful, very large snake um, that should be left alone to eat venomous snakes. Okay, this is the one I mentioned before. Um, these are some of the water snakes. Um, this one is the Florida green. Um, it has kind of a, a greenish khaki-ish color to it. Um, almost all um, large adults over three and a half feet in length are going to be female. Um, when they're gravid, when they're, when they're pregnant with um, their, their um, live birth givers. <laughs> so their litters are usually up to about 20 to 30, but can be up to more than 100. Um, so they, they become quite, quite full <laughs> when they are 
when they're gravid. And here's the Florida brown water snake, another very common species um, that is definitely brown, um, shades of brown hues on this one. And again, live bearing. This species is live bearing up to 60 young. And the juveniles look kind of similar to what people might um, might think a copperhead might look like. So um, some of them are killed off because of, of that similarity. And this is the southern banded water snake. This one is, is really very, very common. Um, this one, again, gets murdered a lot out there because as an adult, it's pretty thick bodied and it gets kind of a, a dark, dusky looking hue to it. Um, when people see this, um, if they don't know any better, they are often mistaken for water moccasins um, and people kill them because of it. Now, one thing I'd like to alert you to as far as identification goes is that they have this really distinctive whiskering under their jaw here. Um, their whole mouth, they have just these like downturning lines here um, that we refer to as whiskering. So um, that's one way to, to ID it. Um, they do hang out in water most of the time or near water. And of course, in this case, the juveniles, again, are mistaken quite often for copperheads just because they, they look a lot like what people expect a copperhead would look like. But remember, we don't even have copperheads here. We don't. They are only up in northern Florida and above. It's just too hot for them here. So these guys are all beneficial, um, really great um, additions to your pond. Um, and some people say, I don't know if this is true or not, but some people say that they're pretty territorial and that if you have them, um, they might help to keep venomous snakes away. All right. So again, um, these are non-venomous snakes here, but they are trying to mimic venomous ones. Notice how the harmless banded water snake here, he's flattening out his body um, to look as thick as possible in his head. He's trying to make his head look really triangular, which is what venomous snake heads look like. So he's consciously trying to make himself look dangerous, um, hoping that you will leave him alone. Um, and sometimes that backfires on them and people end up killing them because of that. Um, so the same with this harmless little Eastern hognose here. See how he's flattened out his head and his neck to try to make his head look really big and angular, just like a venomous snake. Um, and notice, however, that the tail is still quite long and thin at the end and his round pupil is very, very evident in both of these pictures. That round eye, that round pupil tells you that, nope, this is just a non-venomous snake trying to look threatening. All right, here's a closer look at that. Um, the non-venomous have that really, really distinctive round pupil. The venomous have that like cat-like eye, that cat-like pupil. And of course, the, the head shape as well. Um, they, they have kind of that, that angular, thick head. Um, here's a comparison of the banded water snake on the left, the non-venomous one, and the, the venomous cottonmouth moccasin with that really angular pointed triangular head that they have. So, um, of the four venomous snakes that we do have in our area, um, three of them are pit vipers. The only one that's not a pit viper is the coral snake. Um, and the pit vipers are known by that angular head, that really kind of large triangular almost shaped head. Um, they 
are called pit vipers because they have this heat sensing pit right there next to their nose. Um, they also have two rather large hollow fangs through which venom is delivered. They don't release all of their venom in the first bite. So multiple bites can occur, um, increasing that load of venom that gets into you. Um, even a, a dead severed snake head can inject venom for up to 90 minutes after it's been severed. So keep that in mind. Um, killing snakes is, is definitely not something that you want to try to do. Um, the, the other snakes, including the venomous coral snakes, have smaller, more hooked teeth. Um, coral snakes, as a popular misconception, um, they don't necessarily have to chew on you to deliver venom. Venom can be delivered in just one chomp. So you will receive more though, the longer they all are allowed to, to chew on your skin. All right, here's some more of the, the clues to differentiate um, the water snake here. Now, you know, I talked about a triangular head being on the venomous, you know, a lot, a lot of snakes have a somewhat triangular head, but the, the venomous pit vipers have that really noticeably broad head with a, with a noticeably skinny neck. Um, so that's one clue there. And of course the heat sensing pit and that elliptical pupil. Um, pointy snout is another one, but remember also the exception to that is the non-venomous hog nose, which also has the, the pointy nose. Um, but he does also have a very broad neck. Now the exception to the small head and round pupil rule is this guy. Uh, remember red touch yellow kill a fellow so and he has a black nose so we're looking at a coral snake here um, and they are definitely venomous um, but they do not have that that big triangular head they have a, a normal snake head that's rather slender um, and they they do have regular round pupils um, and that is because they are not pit vipers so they're still venomous, but they're not pit vipers. Okay, so these are the, the venomous ones that we need to worry about. Um, the southern copperhead, like I said, only, only way up in the panhandle and above. It's too hot for them here. They're, you're never going to find a southern copperhead down in these parts of Florida. The cottonmouth moccasin, yes, this one is pretty abundant here. The eastern coral snake, um, you know, I've lived here my entire life, 50 years, never have I seen a coral snake in the wild, and I'm out in the woods a lot. The same with these guys, they're here, believe me, they're here. I get pictures um, from people all the time, oh my gosh, I have a rattlesnake in my back 40. Um, so just leave them alone, leave them alone, leave them alone. Um, timber rattlesnake only in Northern Florida. So you don't have to worry about the timber rattlesnake either. So it's just these four that you might ever encounter. Um, you know, assume if you're out in the woods, assume that they're going to be there um, and act accordingly. But you may never see any of them. Um, but just be aware, be aware of your surroundings and assume that they are going to be there and dress accordingly, wear boots if you're going hiking, that sort of thing. Um, and if you encounter them, give them wide berth, get, you know, turn the other way, walk back, um, don't take a chance. Um, if you happen to have anything that in your yard that you're really worried about, call a professional trapper to come. Don't attempt to, you know, you see videos of people that are um, trying to scoot a, 
you know, a, <laughs> like a 15 pound, six foot long water moccasin into a garbage can with a, with a broom. It's like, no, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. Um, if it really is concerning to you, if you really want to have a snake removed, call a professional and pay for their service. Um, it's definitely not worth um, getting bitten over. Um, and, and please don't try to kill any snake ever. Um, okay, so again, I'm really drilling this in, but <laughs> red touch yellow, kill a fellow, red touch black, friend of Jack. Um, so this is the coral snake. Remember, black nose also. Okay, again, vertical pupil, heat sensing pit, nostril. This is a venomous snake head as well. Um, you can see that um, cat-like <laughs> uh, elliptical pupil there too. Um, remember, coral snakes are the only exception. Coral snakes are the only venomous snake that has the round pupil. Okay, pit vipers do not lay eggs. They all give birth. Um, notice the pits here. This is the cotton mouth moccasin um, with the, there's the nostril and there's the heat sensing pit. And that heat sensing pit is to sense warm blooded mammals. Um, it senses their body heat and birds as well. Um, whatever their prey might be, um, that helps them to sense it. Um, and there's the pit on the dusky pygmy rattlesnake. So in Manti County, you might someday encounter the Florida cottonmouth water moccasin. Um, they, again, um, it's a pit viper, so it gives birth to live young, 10 to 20 live young every two to three years. They can be up to 48 inches long and they're known for their thick bodies. Um, as juveniles, they are very copper colored. And as juveniles, they have this yellow at the tip of their tail. And this is for them to wag that yellow um, to attract prey. Um, something comes along and investigates that little thing, the rest of their body's hidden, and they come in and they swoop in and, and grab whatever it is that's curious about that little yellow wagging tail. Um, so juvenile color, really distinctly different from the adult color, which is very, very dark, almost looks black in some cases. Um, and it's very dull, very, it's not a shiny snake as an adult, it's, it's very dull colored. Okay, again, here are some, some good images of the venomous snakes. They have those really big puffy cheeks, let's say, <laughs> um, hiding all those scary teeth. Um, so this is the um, juvenile moccasin here, and you can see just that really kind of bulbous head and the, the much skinnier neck. And the same with the, the Eastern Diamondback rattlesnake. Same thing, really fat cheeks, um, really slender neck. Now, this poor guy was needlessly killed. Um, killing snakes really does greatly increase a person's chance of being bitten. It's always better to leave them alone. Um, they really are a significant middle order predator in the ecosystem. And without them, the numbers of the prey species would increase to really unnatural levels. Um, and the predators that eat snakes would struggle to find food. So it's, it's one of those key species, um, you know, that they help keep populations of, of rodents at bay. Um, it's really so important not to kill snakes. Um, there are some species of native animals like the opossum 
that consume venomous snakes and help keep the venomous snake populations at bay as well. Um, and opossums are, are pretty cool, actually. Um, they're known to consume at least 12 species of snakes, including the venomous. Um, this one's eating, this is in northern Florida, and it's eating a copperhead in someone's garage here. Um, and other mammals that consume venomous snakes are raccoons, otters, fox, bobcats, coyotes, and black bears. And here's the eastern diamondback rattlesnake. Um, again, it's a pit viper, so it produces live young. Um, remember, not all um, snakes um, or not all snakes that produce live young are going to be venomous. Um, remember my, my personal snake story of my um, ribbon snake that had all those babies. Um, so some of them do, some of them don't. Um, but one rule is that all the pit vipers do produce live young. So if you run across snake eggs, you can guarantee they're not from a pit viper. Okay, so these guys can strike up to a distance of two thirds of their body length. Um, they are primarily in those pine flat woods and sand pine and scrub habitats that I mentioned before that are really attractive to real estate developers. Um, so you, if you move into a fairly new community and, and that was built in one of these ecosystems, chances are you're going to have some residual eastern diamondback rattlesnakes in your area so be prepared for that um, they were there first um, so each time it sheds its skin um, it will add a segment to the rattle but that does not give you any idea of how old that snake is that's a misconception um, because some of them can break off um, and also you don't know how many times a year that particular snake is shedding its skin so it's really not much of an indicator of the age uh, venomous snakes again this is the dusky pygmy rattlesnake um, again, it's a pit viper, so it produces live young between only five and eight um, are born. The juvenile in this species also has a yellow tip to attract predators so that it can keep itself sustained um, on prey as a youngster. Um, these guys are quite small, that's why they're called pygmy, um, whereas the eastern diamondback rattler is quite large. These guys are, are really very small for a rattlesnake, um, and um, they're, they're still just as, as venomous, um, you know, perhaps the force the venom is delivered might be a little bit lessened by their smaller size, but still nothing to mess around with. Um, so keep a wide berth, leave them alone. Don't think just because they're small that you can pick them up, <laughs> leave it alone. So most snake bites do involve the harassment of snakes, unfortunately. Um, you know, you'll, you'll hear on the news that, you know, some young guy is in the hospital because the snake that he picked up bit him in the face. Well, um, unfortunately, you know, most of the time that these things happen, they're young men aged 16 to 25 that are trying to show off. And the vast majority of these incidents have alcohol intoxication involved. Um, out of the more than 330 million people in the US, um, only about five people per year die of snake bites. So it's a pretty small number. So to prevent a snake bite, avoid areas where snakes may be hiding. Um, before you go to pick up that log or that large rock, assume that a snake might be under there. So as long as you assume this, wh whatever you're doing, um, you, you know, you'll be fine. You'll be more cautious that way. So 
even though most snakes are not venomous, avoid picking up or playing with any snake unless you have been properly trained to do so. And of course, never provoke a snake. That is when many of the serious snake bites happen. Um, if you're walking in the woods, take a walking stick with you and tap ahead of you, if you, especially if you're entering an area where you can't see your feet. Snakes will try to avoid you if they are given enough warning. And when hiking in an area known to have snakes, or you assume has snakes, wear long pants and boots if possible. Between seven and 8,000 people are bitten by venomous snakes each year, um, but only, like I said, only about five die from the bite. Um, both pit viper and coral snake bites can be effectively treated with antivenin, but the time between the bite and the medical care can be very critical. Um, so if you're bitten, just seek immediate help. Um, immobilize the bitten area and keep it lower than your heart. Um, if medical care is more than 30 minutes away, wrap a bandage, a loose bandage, not a tourniquet. Um, and make sure that it's loose enough to slip a finger on it. This may somewhat um, slow the spread of venom, but remember tourniquets, not recommended. Okay, if a snake bite should occur, occur um, do not pick up the snake or try to trap it. If possible, try to ID the snake or at least make a note of the color and shape and size of the snake. Do not wait for symptoms to occur if you're bitten seek immediate medical attention. Um, if it happens to someone besides yourself, do not allow that person to become overexerted. If necessary, carry them to safety. Do not apply a tourniquet. Do not apply a cold compress. Do not apply ice or soak the wound in water. Do not cut into a snake bite with a knife or razor. Do not attempt to suck out the venom with your mouth. Um, do not give the person stimulants or pain medicine unless the doctor tells you to. Do not give the person anything by mouth. And do not raise the site of the bite above the level of a person's heart. All right, I'm going to end on this really, really cute juvenile black racer. And I ask you, who could not love this little face? Um, I am always happy to ID your snake. I really prefer to ID live snakes. So take a picture of that snake. Don't kill that snake, please. Um, and you can email me pictures of it. Um, take them from a safe distance. Use your Zoom on your camera. Um, and I'm always happy to ID or give it any more information about a snake. Um, and if you have any questions, if you'd like to um, type those in now, um, we'll take a few minutes to answer any questions you might have. Um, if you'd like this to be sent to you um, right away, if you could give me your email right now in the chat, just type in your email address and I will send this to you. I can send it as a PDF um, or as a link. Um, so specify which you'd prefer. Um, otherwise, we are recording this and it will be put up on our YouTube channel, our Manatee County Extension YouTube channel um, in the future. All right, any questions? If you have any questions, you can type those in now. If you'd like the presentation, give me your email. <clears throat> Other than that, thank you for joining today. <clears throat> Excuse me, my voice is giving out on me. <laughs> and I hope you all have a wonderful day out there. Oh, how, okay, someone has a question. Um, let's see, how long before a biter shows symptoms? I think she must mean um, a person who's been bitten. How long before a, a, a person that's bitten shows symptoms? Um, it, usually it's within about 10 minutes, but again, you don't want to wait 
um, once you're bitten by a venomous snake, you don't want to wait for those symptoms to appear. If, if you've been bitten by a, bit, a venomous snake, you want to immediately get to medical attention. Try to, you know, try to make sure you have a basic idea of what that snake looked like. Um, you know, sometimes we're bitten by something and we don't know what it was. So, you know, and like I said before, even non-venomous snakes can bite you. Um, they're not going to do any harm to you. Um, but, you know, if you, if you didn't see what bit you, you probably want to go get medical attention just to make sure that it was not a venomous snake that bit you. I'll hang out just for a few minutes here and see if we have any other questions. Hmm. Okay. Someone asked that um, they said they would like to lose some of their fear of snakes. And um, are there any suggestions on places to like safely observe them? That's, that's a little tough. Um, in the wild, you never know where they're going to be. So, um, and I hike all the time, like in our preserves and only occasionally will I see um, like a, a red rat snake or something like that. So oh, it, it's hard to answer that. Um, as far as like a, a herpetology exhibit goes in our area, the only one I know of that's close by would be at Sarasota Jungle Gardens. Um, they have um, a snake exhibit where they're behind glass. Um, I don't know if that would be helpful to you or not, but, um, and probably a lot of them are not native snakes that they have in their collection there. Um, but that would get you in the room with snakes anyway. <laughs> um, that is Sarasota Jungle Gardens. And it's just off of 41, um, not very far into Sarasota. It's pretty much in, in the north part of Sarasota. Um, and it, it's just a nice park to visit in general, but, um, as, as you enter, like, as you enter and go to the right, they have a, a big herpetology exhibit there. Um, that's the only one I know of that's, that's local to us. Um, other than that, it, it's just a matter of a chance, um, you know, encounter with them in like Robinson Preserve or um, Emerson Point Preserve. Um, you might occasionally run across a snake. Um, and if you do, just give it space, back away, leave it alone. <laughs> if you want to know what it is, take a picture from safe distance and send it to me. All right. Any more questions or comments or anything? Um, All right, well, I don't see anybody else typing anything, so I'm gonna go ahead and close up shop for today. <laughs> um, so feel free to email me though in, in the future um, with any questions you might have. All right, everybody have a great day. Take care, bye-bye.